So who thought we would all be networking virtually? I mean, a lot of us have been doing it anyway for quite a long time. So networking at a distance, networking virtually, social media has been around for a long time. But we might need to reconsider some of the other things that we're doing. So my name's Amy. I'm an MBA careers consultant at Aston University. And this is part of the Aston Business School Leadership Essential Series. So this is session four of six. And I'm joined today by my colleague, Yasmin, who is also a MBA careers consultant at the university. And Yasmin's going to kick us off. I sure am. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see me moving along the slides. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through briefly what we are going to cover today. Um, because this is an online webinar, it, and it's quite a short period of time as well that Amy and I are, are delivering the session, um, it's presented quite a challenge to create something interactive, but we'll try and keep it as interactive as possible. So I really encourage you to keep posting messages in the chat, um, ask questions, add comments, um, let us know your thoughts uh, on any of the content that is presented today, uh, because it will also enable us to learn from each other um, and really gain some insight into some good networking practice um, and everyone's views on what works well and what doesn't work so well. So do keep engaging with us. Um, and when we finish, there will also be an opportunity for more questions and to, to keep in touch. Um, so we will look at building connections and, and why that is more important than ever now, um, adapting some of those best practice tips um, from face-to-face -face relationships and how that might work in an online environment, uh, where some things might apply across, uh, where there might be changes in networking etiquette online versus face-to-face. Uh, Amy will talk a bit more about the power of networks uh, using a simple networking model and how to develop those online networking skills. Um, I'm going to start off by a little exercise which you can do throughout the session. So I'll talk you through getting started with this exercise um, and I encourage you to work on it as we go. So it's to think a little bit more about how networking is a two-way process. Um, so traditionally, when you go out to a networking event, you might be thinking about the people you're going to meet, how you're going to build more connections and expand that network that you've got. But part of networking is also all about what you can offer um, and what you can bring to people that you meet for the first time, such as your existing network. So I'm just popping onto the next slide. So I'd like you to have a little think about who is in your network at the moment um, and the range of skills, expertise and experiences that are already at your fingertips. Um, so remembering that it isn't just about what you can, can gain, it's about what you can offer as well. So I'm going to show you an example in a moment, but I'd like you to create a networking tree um, and think about all the different branches representing various people in your network. So I've got some examples there of different skills, um, different types of people, different knowledge that you can put on your tree, but you can also create or add your own. So for example, you might think of somebody who's a really good baker. You might be able to think of somebody who can offer legal advice. You might know somebody who um, is a volunteer or does some charity fundraising. You might know somebody in the health sector. So it's to get you thinking about some of those things and what people do, and what people have to offer. Um, so I'm going to paste this link in the chat in a moment. Um, I'm just going to explain, if I go to the next slide, um, how your tree might look. So I just did this in Word, but I'm not expecting you to create a wonderfully graphically designed uh, tree on your computers while also trying to listen to Amy talk. So you're more than welcome to just grab a bit of paper um, and draw a tree. Um, I am using Padlet for this and Padlet also has a doodle function. So you can also doodle on the screen. But again, bear in mind that might take you away from the webinar screen unless you've got another device with you that you can do that on. So what you may want to do is on a bit of paper is draw this tree. 
with some examples of people you know, uh, maybe just using initials or first names so that for data protection, you're not suddenly sharing lots of people's information. Um, so just a first name or just some initials or even pseudonyms. If you don't want to use any real names, that's also fine. You can make up the names, even if that means um, you kind of know who you're, who you're talking about. And then you can either take a photo of it um, and uh, upload it onto the Padlet website or if you're using your phone anyway, take a screenshot um, and then upload it directly from your phone. So I'll pass over on to Amy and I will paste the Padlet link in the chat now, and then I'll post it again at the end and we're going to view the trees at the end. Um, and hopefully there'll be a nice big collage of everyone's networking tree by the end of the session. Okay, so anybody who thought you were going to get away with just sitting and eating your sandwich today and not actually having to do any work alongside this session, you were wrong. Yasmin and I are very, very keen on getting this interactive and making sure that you're able to take part as well. So once the link's in the chat, feel free to open that up in another window, um, but do make sure you're keeping attention on these slides as well as we go through. Okay. So what are the key steps to successful networking online or offline? Feel free to start posting some of your thoughts in the chat. What do you think are the key steps to successful networking? What makes a difference when you're trying to go out there and build your network? How do you get people engaging with you? And how do you show that you can offer value to them? How do you make sure that you're strategic in building that network? And actually, a question, do you need to be strategic? Is it just about growing, um, growing your network, meeting different people and seeing when they become relevant to you and when you can add value to them? Or do you need to think strategically about it? So, yeah, definitely. Having a skill or service to offer in return, I think, is a really good way of thinking about successful networking. Being open and honest that's a really good answer as well. So don't try and inflate what you do. Don't think about trying to oversell yourself. Your network will grow because you're honest, because they're honest, and because you have value to each other. And yes, definitely, particularly at the moment, making that human connection, it's really, really difficult over screens to make a human connection. But we can do it, and we can do it by making eye contact through video. We can do it by going beyond just the chat window. We can do it by opening up our homes, our lives, our families. We probably know more about our work colleagues today than we did three months ago. Because actually, we've seen the challenges that they face trying to work at the kitchen table. We've seen the obstacles that they have to overcome in terms of technology. My laptop's currently sitting on top of four boxes on top of a desk in order to try and make it work. And all of us have had to face those different challenges. And that means that we can make that human connection. We can be a bit more real with each other, perhaps, rather than having that work face and that work persona on all of the time. So we're going to take you through six stages for networking. Now, these six stages are originally developed for face to face networking and how you take that to a wider stage. But what we've done is we've tweaked each of these to fit this new social distancing virtual era that we live in. So, the first stage, and we'll go through these in a bit more detail, but the first stage is to map your network. And this is what Yasmin's already introduced you to with the networking tree. So think about who's in your network and how you can create those branches, where new branches come from. The second step is location. So how are you going to meet people first of all, but then how are you going to continue those meetings? Stage three, what do you say after hello? We can all say hello. Some of us can perhaps say hello in a few different languages. But what comes after that? What comes once you've had that initial introduction. Following up, and then as we've said all along, giving that value to get value. And then back to that tree analogy, because we do like our trees, you have to tend to your networks. You can't just leave it there, otherwise it'll wither away and die. 
you have to water your networks to help them to grow. So we'll look at each of these areas in a little more detail. So when you're mapping your network, when you're creating your networking tree, have a think about yourself as the branch of that tree. You're at the center. Who are your mentors? Who are the people that you go to in work or in a professional body? Perhaps you have a formal relationship or it's more informal. Who are the prospects that you're talking to? And that could be from a new business development point of view, but it could also be just about who are the relationships that you're trying to build? Who are the people that you work with, both those within your organization, your peers and your clients? Who are the multipliers, the people who have big networks of their own, who can introduce you, who can take you on and make you um, give you introductions to other people who you want to get hold of? And who are the champions? Who are the people who are ambassadors for you? Who goes out of their way to post a really positive comment on your LinkedIn? Who talks to your boss and says, oh, that person did a really good job? Who sends you an email to say, do you know what? You're awesome. Those champions are going to be great for helping you to expand your network. OK, so we've mapped our networks and you're doing that as we go through this process. How do you meet people? So it's quite easy when we're face to face, we meet people in the office. We go out to meetings, we go to conferences, we go to events. We're meeting people all of the time. We've got professional bodies that we're members of. And we might do some volunteering work, working with the local school, painting things, working with the scout group. We might also be participating in separate study. So we're going along to an evening class. But what happens when all of that is taken away from you? How do we meet people when we're online? And the answer is exactly the same. So you should have a social media network. You will have a LinkedIn page, hopefully, and that LinkedIn page will have connections, people that you've met in real life. And depending on your approach to social media, you may say yes to everybody who asks to connect with you. You may be a little bit more strict with your criteria. But that is the starting point for hosting your network online for your CRM system, essentially, your network relationship management system. Then you're here today at this Aston and Chamber of Commerce event. How can you be networking when you're in a webinar? With well, this little chat box that's down the side of the page, you can use that. You can be talking to each other through that chat box. You've already introduced yourself. What else can you say? If you're a member of a committee, then you might be attending committee meetings virtually. So have a chat with people outside. Arrange one-to-one -one conversations to happen outside the committee meeting. Think about any courses or study sessions you're doing. Who else can you be talking to? Can you be creating different channels of connection? So we talk about that human connection, but also think about that technology connection. How do you separate work from personal? So if all of your work communication is taking place on Microsoft Teams, for example, then do you use WhatsApp or FaceTime for some of your personal communication. We're all spending a lot more time on screens than we ever thought we would be, but how can we make that distinction between the types of communication and the types of networking that we're doing? Turn your cameras on. So we talk about making that human connection. When you're in a networking, online networking environment, are you the kind of person who sits there muted and with the camera switched off? Or do you turn the camera on and actually look people in the eye? And I confess, I'm somebody who is much more comfortable with the camera switched off because do you know what? I'm a multitasker. I try and do lots of different things all at the same time. But if you're really trying to build your network and you're trying to build that credibility, that authority, that connection, you need to respect the people that you're on a call with, respect the people that you're engaging with, and give them your full attention. And yes, if you need to use a background because you're not happy with how the backdrop looks behind you, then do it. 
but at least engage with somebody a little bit of a window into your soul and think about what the best location is for that networking to take place. We're all using different platforms and different technologies as well, and some are better than others. Some give you more chat functionality, some give you more video functionality. Um, I think there's a lot of excitement today that Microsoft Teams has now gone three by three. So instead of only being able to see four people on a screen, you can now actually see nine. Um, a lot of the platforms are doing that anyway, but for Teams, that's something new and perhaps not something that their product development team thought they'd ever have to introduce. But it's all part of that human connection, that making eye contact. So think about stage three. We've done stage one, we've mapped our network. We've done stage two, we've thought about where we're going to meet people. Stage three is that opening line. So what is it you're going to say to somebody that starts to build that rapport and build that connection? And we talk about kind of a continuum across the trust and rapport side of things. So you might start by talking about the general business environment. If you're not particularly comfortable sharing personally, then think about what you can talk about that's common to everybody. So how is your week going? What do you think of what's happened in the news? Now, be a bit careful there because everybody can be a bit sensitive currently, but maybe think generically what's happening. How are you being affected by lockdown? Then you might want to talk about the industry. So if you know the person that you're approaching, and actually that's one of the benefits of networking online, is quite often you will know a bit more about somebody before you inter interact with them. You will have seen their social media profile. You'll know where they come from. So you can dispense with a lot of the who are you, where are you from type questions and think about their specific industry. So I see that you work for Deutsche Bank. How is financial transaction changing in the current world? I see that you work for BHSF. What is it that we're doing that we can offer to the wider community? I see that your company has contributed to a charity initiative. I'd love to know more about that. So we can show that we're paying attention. We can show that we've done a bit of research. We're not coming across as stalkerish because all of this is in the public domain, but we're asking people to share information about themselves. And we all know that we're more than happy to talk about ourselves if we're ever given the opportunity. A few things to avoid, trying to sell straight away. So share what you do, be open about what you do, show what value you can add to other people, but try not to sell on the first message. We've all had those comments coming into us on LinkedIn saying, hi, please can you connect so that I can invite you to my webinar? Or please can you connect so that you can buy this product or service from me? I had one today from a financial planner who obviously hadn't read my profile, and was offering me lots of things for businesses that I've never even worked for. So when you're trying to network online, make use of the data that you have at your fingertips. Use that to personalize and to create that additional connection. And when you're networking face to face, one of the worst things you can say is where's the food? Because it shows that you're not engaged in the conversation. You're not engaged in the event, the activity, what's taking place. The online equivalent for that, where did I put my snacks? Where are the biscuits? Oh, I've run out of coffee. It shows you're not in the moment. So we have this balance to strike between making a human connection and being real and showing that we are caring and that we are in the moment. My camera and mic are switched off, so I'm not really paying attention. We talked earlier about honesty, and we said that honesty was really important for networking. There is such a thing as being a little bit too honest at times. So think about who you're connecting with and how much honesty and how much real you want to share with them. And biscuits and snacks are definitely still important. So when it comes to your opening lines, do make use of chat windows. Just because the organizers of a webinar haven't told you you're allowed to chat, doesn't mean that you can't. If the functionality is switched on, take the opportunity. Be the first person to get out there and just say hi. 
And you've all been brilliant here because you've shared some really nice information about who you are, who you work for, and a little bit more detail about what it is you're hoping to achieve. But do share your chat lines, do share your opening lines when you're talking to people. And what are you here today to achieve? So that's a question you can ask. What do you want to get out of today's session? And that's something you can ask anybody in any networking environment because you're trying to find out what is it that's special to them. And what comes from that is a pain point. And from a pain point, you can then look at how you can add value. So think about the types of questions you can ask without interrogating, but to build that connection and to build that conversation. OK, so you've made a connection. You've met somebody on a webinar or you've connected with them on LinkedIn. You've been in the same meeting, same volunteering environment, same committee. What do you do next? Well, the first thing is to add that person to your database. Now, for many of us, that is LinkedIn. So we use LinkedIn as our contact database. For those of you who are running CRM systems or who have access or Salesforce or any of those um, kind of networking sales databases, you might consider whether this is somebody who should be added to that pipeline or whether it's a broader networking opportunity. When you've had a conversation with somebody online, You've probably talked about something you've read. You might have discussed the webinar that you were participating in. Maybe there's a report that your organisation has produced that might be particularly relevant to them. Or you've seen something in the news that you think could add real value. If you've said you'll share a link, then the quickest and easiest way to continue to build that networking relationship is to follow up and share that link, share the report, share the article. How about your networking tree? So within your networking tree, you've got these different branches that talk about people who are particularly good at baking or people in your network who volunteer and work for charities, people in your network who have legal expertise. But those branches can intersect with each other as well. You may find that somebody in your network who is particularly focused on their volunteering work needs somebody who's a really great baker to help them do some fundraising. Can you share contacts between the branches on your networking tree? And if you've said that you'll make an introduction, how quickly are you following up that introduction? And finally, we might not be able to go to coffee shops anytime soon. Hopefully we can sit out in the gardens. Um, beer gardens may open. We might be able to go to beach cafes. We may be able to sit and have outdoor food in a, in a garden centre or something like that eventually. But send invitations. So even if you can't get out and about and meet face to face, think about how you can have a, a coffee or a connection. Do you want to invite that person along to your office quiz night on a Friday night that takes place on Zoom? Well, it depends how well behaved those quiz nights are and how much of a connection you've made. But think about how you can get somebody into your network. How can you make it a nice, easy process for them? And what we tend to find at the moment, actually, is there are people who are much busier than they were before. There are people who are perhaps not quite so busy because the world of work has changed around them. But all of us are a lot more prepared to pick up the phone. We're signing up to more webinars. We're agreeing to participate in more chats. The door is wide open. So whereas before you might have felt that you were encroaching on somebody's precious time. And that's never the case because it's always a choice whether we say yes or no to a meeting. But now more than ever, the door is wide open. People want to hear from you. They want the opportunity to engage, to network, to chat with somebody a bit different. If you spend all day with the same people in your house and then the only conversations you're having online are with the same three work colleagues, then do you know what? Speaking to somebody a bit different can actually brighten your day. Chatting about something that isn't work, chatting about something that perhaps as a passion of yours or just a little bit different 
to help expand your network, but also to give you that human connection back. And I appreciate I'm going at a whistle stop tour here. So do ask questions in the chat box if you want to. We can do those along the way or save them up for the end. OK, so we're into stage five. So we've been through building our networking tree. We've decided where we're going to find people and how we're going to connect with them afterwards. We've thought about what we're going to say to them initially, and then we've considered how we follow that up. So let's look at following that up in a bit more detail. And this is the giving value to get value. So how can you add value to people in your network? And we've talked introductions. But what about knowledge that you've got? Are you part of a different network or a different community that might add value to this new connection of yours? Can you get them through the door to something that they've been really interested in joining for quite a while? Are there influences within your industry that you have a direct line to because perhaps you work in the same organisation? but they're seen as off limits or scary to those who don't have that instant connection. Can you open that door? Can you make it easier for somebody to network with people that perhaps seem distant from them? It's much easier online. We don't have those geographical or physical barriers to get in the way. So using social media, you can make a direct connection. You can make a direct introduction. There's a theory on these slides. Um, this is all about the psychology of persuasion, and this comes from advertising theory initially. But you look at these different elements of persuasion, and it helps to explain a little bit about why giving value to get value is so important. In the theory of reciprocity, if we're given something, whether that's a compliment, whether that's somebody making a recommendation about us on LinkedIn. We want to return the favour. So you are far more likely to recommend somebody on LinkedIn if they've recommended you first. So think about what those transactions are. What can you exchange without being cynical about it? Because we are all human and we want to make that human connection. But what can you exchange? What can you give that will see benefits coming back to you? Commitment and consistency is all about getting people to commit early. So the example here is you get somebody to put a small postcard in their window. And that doesn't cost them a huge amount to do that. So you get that early commitment. You then go back and say, could they put a bigger poster in their window? And because they've done the small commitment first, because they've signed up to that small action that didn't cost them a lot, they're more willing to do the bigger action. You then ask them to paint the entire front of their house. And because they've been through those steps with you, they're probably more likely to say yes than if you just went up to them as a stranger and said, please paint the front of your house for me. Social proof and safety in numbers. We follow those around us. We look at what people are doing and we try and blend in. So this kind of idea of persuasion is if we can get other people to participate in an activity, if we're running a webinar, if we're running a networking event, if we're trying to get people engaged with something that we're doing online, can we get some of our champions, our ambassadors, those within our networking tree who are already advocates for us, to talk it up a bit and just get that social proof so that those who are wider, who aren't quite directly in our network yet, are more willing to come in. Authority and authenticity. So how do we demonstrate that we're credible? How do we make sure that people know that we, we are talking about something relevant, that we are going to add value to them because we are genuine and we're authentic? And again, online, it's a lot easier because your CV is just sitting there in front of people. So the communication that you have through social media, the profile that you build on LinkedIn, the personal brand that you create about yourself is already out there. And things are more attractive when they're limited. So I can make this introduction for you. I can introduce you to my friend Yasmin. 
But I don't want to make too many introductions to Yasmin because I know she's a really, really busy person. But for you, you're special. So I will make that introduction to Yasmin because I think that you really will get on and add value to each other. So you can use those persuasion techniques. And again, without being cynical about it, and yes, we want to be human. And yes, we want to make genuine human connections. This isn't about trying to lie or trying to be fake. This is just about having an understanding of how our psychology works in order to think about how we can give that value and get value in return. Sometimes it's just about phrasing. Sometimes it's just about framing and thinking about what would I want to hear back from somebody else? So I know that's a little bit academic for a networking session. So hopefully we won't have too much more academic side of it. OK, tending to your network. So remember, our network is this tree. And we're hoping that this tree is going to bear fruit in the future. But the only way it's going to bear fruit is if we keep feeding it and watering it. We need to tend to our network and look after it. And there are lots and lots of excuses, lots of reasons why we don't tend to our networks. And one of the biggest, not enough time. There is never enough time. There are never enough hours in the day. And you know what? That probably is very true for a lot of us. But how much time do you spend scrolling through social media? I heard something, it was a stat the other day that we probably spend the equivalent of the Empire State Building scrolling through social media every single day, which firstly is incredibly depressing, but also is quite a staggering statistic as well. How about if we use that scrolling through social media to help build our network? So when we see something that we like, then actually like it. And if you want to go one step further, do you know what? Shock horror. You could even comment on it. And when you comment, you start to create an opportunity for engagement. So it's scary. For a lot of us, we're lurkers. On social media platforms, we lurk. We sit and we watch what's going on around us, but we don't actively participate. So maybe take that first step and just see if you can build a connection with somebody, build a relationship. Now, this one's me. I don't like keeping records. I'm not very organized. But you know what? There are a lot of tools and platforms out there you can use to help you. So keep your diary up to date. Try and merge different diaries. Think about how you can use tools like um, Trello or Slack or any of these other conversation tools in order to try and pull, pull things together. Look at the different um, social media tools as well to help keep records, because that is a database. LinkedIn is a database. There's a comment on um, the chat window about quality over quantity and definitely. Tend to your network. Make sure you are investing in your networks. Try and talk to people who are talking back rather than just everybody out there. Tools for organization that are particularly useful. You can merge your calendars on your phone. So if you've got lots of different email accounts with lots of different calendars, then trying to find one of the apps that pulls them all together can be really, really helpful. Think about, um, think about how you can connect some of your social media platforms as well. So although things like Hootsuite and Buffer tend to be used on a commercial basis, you may also find that you can use them to pull all of your different conversations into one particular platform so that you know that you might have spoken to somebody on LinkedIn, you've also spoken to them on Twitter, and you start to pull that together as an overall record of the conversation. Networking is hard and scary. Yes, yeah, it is. Networking is really hard and really scary until you do lots of it. And you know what? Even when you've done lots of it, it can still be hard and scary. But we're all in the same boat. It does get less scary the more you do. And you think about the things that make a difference for you. So as an example, when I first started out in my career, I went to a lot of face to face networking events and they scared the hell out of me. It was not my comfort zone. But you know what? Everybody in those rooms, and I'm sure you find the same when you go face to face networking, 
everybody in those rooms was wearing a suit and that suit was gray or navy blue or black so what i did to give me confidence in that room was walk in there with a bright pink suit jacket or a bright red suit jacket something that would make me stand out it meant that people came to me so i didn't have to break the ice and start the conversation they started the conversation and came to me and that made the whole process a lot easier you can do similar things online so you might consider having the blue nhs heart next to your name as an icon on linkedin you might think about using hashtags that show that you're open and aware and happy to chat so it's mental health awareness week this week if you're happy to have those types of conversations there are hashtags and things that you can use and i can't network now because everything's virtual you can network more than ever do you know what the biggest problem now is not that you can't network it's that there is far too much opportunity to network get sidetracked, get chatting to people, arrange all of these one-to-one -one discussions and realise you've got to the end of the week and not actually got any work done. So think of everybody that you come across during the week and how you can have those conversations, build that rapport and share that information in the chat windows when you're in webinars. Okay, oh, we've jumped ahead one. So if you were to describe your networking style like an animal, what would it be? So feel free to type in the chat window here, but how would you describe your networking style? And you can think either face-to-face -face or online. Do you jump around from person to person? Do you stick to somebody all night? Do you sit in the background? Are you a lurker? What kind of approach do you take? Yeah, Yasmin's a panda lying on her back and chewing on bamboo. So have a think about what kind of description you would give for your approach to networking. Are you the person hiding in the bushes, watching what everybody else is doing before you decide whether you're going to take the plunge? Or are you the lemur from Madagascar taking over everybody's attention and running kind of center of attention running the show so this is only a little bit of fun um, but there are some networking animals that you can think about so those of us who are challenged networkers who don't find networking that comes easily to us we might be homing pigeons so homing pigeons tend to avoid meeting new people stick with their colleagues don't try anything new stay with the safe and the status quo if you're a rabbit then you're generally quite nervous and you might feel a bit kind of daunted walking into a new room and that could be joining a new chat so you may not take advantage of those virtual committees or those opportunities to network and engage with people who are more senior or through professional services organizations because actually you're scared to join you've got imposter syndrome you think everybody is better than you message they're not uh, if you're a pig you tend to stay near the buffet or your virtual equivalent to the pig is the person who's always got food and drink on the go and you're umming and ahhing about whether you want them to turn the camera on or off quite frankly because who needs to see that much chewing online and it's difficult to chat because you can tell they're more focused on the food than the conversation your butterflies flit around from person to person. So this is the person who might on social media leave a comment on somebody's post, then move off and leave a comment somewhere else. But they never go back to the original post. They never keep the conversation going. Oh, I really like Peacock. Thanks for sharing that one. Turning up in front of someone if they want me there or not. Yep, show your tail feathers. Make an impact. I think that's a really, really good one. And impress people. Peacocks are lovely. They they do impress people. You might be a limpet, so you might find a familiar face and stay there the whole session. But there are some more dynamic networking animals as well. So if you're a cat, and we're either cat people or dog people, I'm a dog person, but either way, your cats tend to be quite focused on the goal. 
they quickly identify people who can help. So cats have generally done their research first. They know who's going to be on that networking call. They know who's going to be in that virtual room and they develop immediate relationships. Your Labrador dog is just bubbly friendly, wants to get in everybody's face and everybody loves them just because they're so enthusiastic. People warm to the Labrador dog, even if they didn't think they'd have anything in common in the first place. And your orangutan is looking for that long term strategic relationship. So focus on the future rather than now. I'm not even going to pretend to understand what Bojack Horseman is, but somebody can explain the cultural reference to me later on. I'm sure it's a very relevant one. But thank you for sharing that in the box. OK, so that's your six steps. And I'm going to hand back to Yasmin now just to do a little bit of an overview of the networking trees. Thank you. So thanks everyone who's posted their tree on the Padlet. Um, if you haven't, you can still add it on. Um, and if you haven't, then just feel free to have a look. I've actually pinned the link to the top of the chat. Um, so it's remained at the top of the chat there. Um, just summarizing from some of the shared posts on here, there was lots of broadening out of networks beyond the examples that I've given. So people have included things like, knowing somebody who can build a website, somebody who can give really good um, health um, and recipe advice. Um, what else have we got? We've got people here who put things on knowing a lot of people who can talk about diversity and inclusion, for whom that's an area of expertise. Um, graphic design was another one. Uh, what else have we got? Um, sales, got a couple here around sales and human resources. So some really nice kind of broad thinking of mapping those networks and identifying some people who you know who um, have those uh, levels of expertise and knowledge at your fingertips. So it's a really good way for you just to think about what exists in your current network um, and what you might be able to tap into, but also how you might share some of those connections. And as Amy mentioned earlier, when you meet new people and you talk about introductions, um, it just helps you to think about who some of those people might be um, to broaden your own network, but also share some of those, those um, connections with others. So I believe that's pretty much the end. Um, do feel free to keep posting those images on the Padlet. Uh, and of course, you can revisit it and look at all the other um, posts on there. And when you get the chance to meet with people again or attend networking events, whether that's virtual for now or face to face, you can remember perhaps some of those entries and um, some of the people other people know that you might want to get in touch with. Um, but using things like the chat are always a really useful way as well of asking for advice or saying, um, I, you know, I, I offer this service. Is anyone interested in working with me on this? That kind of thing and continuing to share some of those messages. Um, so unless there was anything else, Amy, you wanted to, to say for now, are there any questions from anybody about networking, sharing good practice or any comments on what perhaps works really well for you um, or perhaps anything you've tried that you don't think works as well? Um, you're more than welcome to pop some messages in the chat. We'll just keep an eye out for any questions for now. I can see a few of you typing away. So while you're typing, a quick reminder that there are another two sessions in this Aston Leadership Essentials series as well. So keep an eye on your emails from the chamber because that will share the dates for those sessions. Oh, that's a great question there, Meg. Is it appropriate to delete someone from your LinkedIn network? You added them when you didn't really know them. They asked you to, to connect and now regret it. Um, I'm not sure how, how you feel about this, Amy. I, I know I've certainly deleted people off my LinkedIn, but I haven't um, necessarily reconnected them with them. Um, I think perhaps you could almost reconnect and, and almost kind of say address i think the issue i think it might be more awkward if they were re-added into the network perhaps without addressing that they somehow were part of the network and then weren't anymore and um, but perhaps saying something to address that i didn't know 
uh, you very well initially or I'm sorry I, I was a little confused about um our what our professional relationship was or whatever uh, what do you think Amy yeah I'd agree with that I think if you so there are two schools of thought with LinkedIn. You can either accept all connections because you never know who you might be able to add value to and who could add value to you, or you only accept those with whom you already have an existing relationship and you build your network out that way. And the argument is with the second approach that you have a more strategic network that you know that you can call upon them at any given time. The argument for the first approach is that you have a broader network and you never know who might be relevant and useful within that network so you accept somebody who says i want to join and you set and then suddenly they bombard you with sales messages or the content that they're posting isn't relevant or you decide that they've got a different perspective on life to you then yeah delete them get rid of them life's too short to try and build a relationship and a connection with everybody so just be polite move on same as you would in a networking environment and with, none of us are going to be hurt by being left out. I think breakout rooms, so Denise, you mentioned breakout rooms. That's really, really good. We use that a lot with our students at Aston to do group exercises and group activities. And a lot more of the platforms are introducing that functionality. So that's fantastic when you are trying to get people to network and then people can switch on their cameras and have a bit more of that face to face interaction in smaller groups. And yeah, completely agree. Young doing a lot of research goes a long way and helps with knowing who you're going to be speaking to and who else is in the room. And just um, just something else to add there. You are all more than welcome to connect with me and Amy on LinkedIn if you want to. Um, I'm, I'm probably one of those people that does sometimes reject people when they try to connect with me on LinkedIn. But it's only if I can't work out at all uh, why they're connecting with me. So, for example, no common connections or they're in a completely different part of the world and I can't quite work out why they want to connect with me um, and they haven't put anything in the message to say why they want to connect um, but generally if I can see common connections or I can see that for example they're part of this network um, I, I will accept people um, but yeah I can be a little bit ruthless when it comes to my LinkedIn because I quite like to know what my network is and what it represents and who some of the people are that I'm engaging with on a regular basis so I don't tend to accept anyone and everyone into it but you are welcome to connect with us okay. possibly just put in the um the reason for connecting came along to the chamber event and wanted to feedback and you know what feedback is a gift so we love feedback we like to know what works and what didn't work so feel free to use that as your excuse to connect with us, to give us feedback, and then we can build the relationship ongoing. Yeah. So thank you very, very much for your time. I think we've overshot by about five minutes, but that's typical for Yasmin and I. We like talking a lot. Um, 